Good afternoon, Pastor David. John. I'm just checking the camera. Looks good. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> but not you, John. <laughs> Don't put my face in there. <laughs> Viewership will drop. <laughs> want to welcome everybody to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. And thank you guys for tuning in. You know, as we discuss on Tuesdays, we're talking more about current events. And then on Thursdays, we like to tease and draw out your message that you're going to share on Sundays. And so, you know, looking back at this whole pandemic that we have going through, I don't know in what position we're tail in, middle of it, but we look back at it and, you know, you mentioned a little bit on Sunday in your message uh, regarding uh, people coming back. And so in hindsight, Pastor, would, would you say, I want to ask you, how has the pandemic affected the church overall, not just attendance, but affected the entire church? I've been looking at the pandemic as being one of the one of the ways that the Lord shakes up the church a bit, I think, where he has given the church, meaning the body of Christ at large, especially as it pertains to the United States and then localizing it to various congregations, including our own. I, I think that the, uh, the way that I've come to look at the pandemic and how it's affected has been simply by looking at how it's affected us as a congregation. I think it sifted us. I think it sifted the church, but I think it sifted us. I believe that part of what we saw take place with the pandemic was uh, people's fears that were unveiled. Not only did we see people's fears unveiled, you know, fear of death and illnesses and all, but we also saw the response of pastors to how they were going to how they were going to minister through this time of, of fear that the churches had. And so I think that we've seen um, different, different um, expressions of ministry vision or different expressions of um, people's concepts of what the church is and who they are as a pastor. And so some have said, I'm going to be the warrior who's going to lead you through this battle. And and, and they kind of hyped up everything and, and even in, encouraged people to, in some ways, become a bit arrogant. And then you have others who have, uh, who have closed the doors for the churches because they're afraid, um, in an unreasonable way, they're, they, they certainly seem to be exposing a lack of faith. And so you had kind of like a spectrum of, I don't believe a thing to, I believe everything. And so the church being made up of, a, here in the States, being made up of an American population is gonna reflect pretty much the way Americans feel. So I, it's hard to make a general statement related to that in that, uh, or a specific statement, because we all have our own uh, makeup, you know, our own way of seeing how we should lead in times of trouble, mm -hmm. John. So. Here, um, the way we handled it is with caution at the beginning because I'm not a uh, doctor, I'm not a scientist by any means. And, and like all Americans, I, I, wanna, I wanna trust those who say they, they love us. I wanna trust those who say they're concerned for our health. So naturally the medical uh, community is gonna be a, a community I listen to. My son, my son Joseph is a um, is a uh, uh, an RN and, and a, an administrator over a, a uh, hospital, and uh, I I looked to him for his advice and direction in many of the things, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to make decisions without at least asking those who are involved in the fight what's going on and, and how can I handle this best? So for us, I began to feel that what was taking place was at first, um, there was sincerity. I think that you really did have people who wanted the best for us, but then over time, I couldn't help but begin to believe that it was a way of controlling. Mm -hmm. um, there were, as all of us have heard, there have been many disclosures concerning information that was held back from the public and various things that actually um, were done under the under the table that 
that was a, a way of continuing to control the American population. And once you give a politician authority, they don't want to give it back. And so we saw all of that take place. So the way I handled it here in the church was I, I took care of those who were showing up. I encouraged them through the word of God and uh, through prayer. And I encouraged them to put into practice the things that they're learning from the word and to live by faith and to trust the Lord and not to be unwise and presume upon him. And, uh, and I tried to remain at the, at the helm, try to steer the ship of this church into a safe harbor. Mm -hmm. That's what I tried to do. And I, I believe that in the Lord, I, I was successful. Our, our church went through the storm. Our church uh, suffered in many ways. I, I never could understand a pastor who would say, come to the church and who cares with that attitude. And when we had uh, a number of members whom I loved very much die from COVID and my wife and I and you and others in our staff, we, we went through it twice. And um, I, I didn't take it lightly, but I at the same time didn't feel that I was supposed to presume upon the grace of God and and pretend that uh, it's not going to affect me because I've got this magnificent faith, you know. I was never afraid, and even going through that valley, I knew that the Lord was with me. And going through both of the the bouts with COVID, the first one more extreme than the second, my son Joseph told me that he was monitoring me, and he was. He was coming to see me, make sure I was okay. And he said, Dad, you were very close to hospitalization. He said, you, he said, were just 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 a hair's breadth from going into the hospital. I was that concerned. That's how sick you were. And I said, I didn't I didn't sense any illness at all, son. He says, no, I was monitoring you and you were very ill. See, so um, I just I just felt that the church was going through a trial and we're going through it together. I tried to as a pastor, I tried to love my sheep and, and, and bring them through this and I remained calm through the midst of it. We had, we had a number of those who went to heaven in this church. Quite a number of people were affected terribly by it. Um, but we've seen that we've, we've come through. Mm -hmm. and, and our church right now, speaking only of our, our local congregation, is coming, is coming through and we're beginning to, once again, um, thrive. You know, we're seeing the Lord bringing new people we're seeing people who are getting saved we're we're seeing a new a new moment with the lord and so i believe that uh, when it's all said and done that the lord has brought us through and that we're we see the other side now and we're moving in that direction and and our church is doing very well john you know what's interesting is you're sharing this i'm thinking back to the sundays that you and marie were here faithfully every sunday and if anybody needed prayer, uh, sometimes people came for the most time. People would drive by and they'd see us open and then you'd see them make the U-turn, yeah, right? And they'd yeah. come in and, they would, and they'd see you there and they'd ask for prayer. But remember one particular couple that came and they came just to drop off their gift mm -hmm. and that you prayed with them. Mm -hmm. And remember they were They broke, cried. They yeah. cried. Yeah. Yeah. I think, back, I think back to those times where it was uncertain mm -hmm. and there was a little bit of difficulty like, okay, Lord, what are you doing? to where the church is at today. It's amazing to see those, we look back at those, those are sweet times, even though it was a storm, as you mentioned. And we look back now and we say, wow, Lord, you were faithful in, in bringing us to where we're at today. And uh, and I think about your faithfulness. You're out here every Sunday. Nobody knew, and then people started getting wind of it. <laughs> and the next thing you know, we're having a parade, you know? Well, we um, had, I had somebody who, <laughs> I had, it's funny you'd say that, it, it makes me remember somebody posted and said, there's no brave pastors in Chino except for one, you know, and, and uh, the pastors in Chino are cowards. And, and I, 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 I wrote back to the person and I said, you know, I've been here every Sunday. I'm just not trumpeting it. Right. I'm just not doing it so that people see what I'm doing. Um, but no, we've been here and we opened our church to church services long before other churches were right. opening theirs. We just were not talking about it because I'm one of these people who believes that my left hand shouldn't know what my right hand is doing, that you're not to be doing something to be seen by men. And so as a pastor, my concern was to care for the sheep. That's what I do. 
So yeah, you were here with us, John, and we came because I have sheep, and just because the the sanctuary at one time wasn't being used doesn't mean we can't minister the grace right. of God to those who show up. And people were showing up, and yeah, they were surprised. And then we had that big old caravan, and and we all went into the chapel, and I gave a devotion, and we worshiped with Jared, our worship leader, and they came back the next week, and the next week, and the next week. So before this missive was sent out, everybody opened up on on Pentecost. We'd already been open for three weeks, right. you know. But I'm just I just don't believe that you're supposed to you're supposed to put yourself in front of people. Right. I, I think that that it's wiser to you know just just to do what God calls you to do, and and not to post on Facebook or have people calling you. Mr. Hero or Mr. Mm. Brave, because God knows that uh, there's only one who's a hero, and that's Jesus Amen. Christ. The rest of us are supposed to be faithful to our calling. So I was here, you were here, others in my staff were here, um, because, because we wanted to care for the people. That's what we do. And in the end, you know, there are those who are calling me basically a coward because I wasn't following the lead of the superstar and this and that. But uh, the bottom line is, is I follow the lead of the only superstar Amen. and that's Christ. And, and I don't say that lightly. I say that with sincerity. Uh, I, I want to, I want to follow what the spirit says, not with somebody who wants to lead me. I know I, I follow the shepherd, not somebody who wants to be known for being right. something important that's just a fact Amen you, know. To that. And, you know looking back at that we would see people make u-turns yeah they're, you see them looking they're looking at they yeah they make a turn and they come in what they're are you doing in. here yes. well, we're here to, we're here so, to minister to you and that's you know, what we're here for again it's uh, it's not the accolades you were here you and marie were here from day one we love this church john you know i i was i've been here from day one you know including covid including everything because at the end of the day, uh, we love our, 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 our fellowship. I may not know everybody by name. I never was able to, and I won't be able to now, but we care about them. And, and, and if our presence on this campus brought a little hope and encouragement and, and all of that, that's what we were here for. Amen. And so God is good, and that's what I saw through the COVID. Amen. Well, well thank you guys. Pastor, thank you for sharing your heart with us. and, and uh, God bless you, and as we as God continues to use you here at our church, I hope He does. Uh, and uh, church family, thank you for tuning in. I want to invite you to our Wednesday evening services tomorrow, as Pastor has taken us through the Book of Ephesians. Yep, we're looking at the prayer of Paul, and it's an amazing prayer. That's a heavy duty prayer. I'm looking forward to it. Invite your friends and family to come out and join us. Uh, it's a great study. Love to worship with you, be in God's word together, and then uh, tune in again for Thursday as we. I have another random moment with Pastor David. And Pastor, again, thank you for your time. Church family, thank you for tuning in, and God bless you. Amen.